Hey everyone, it's XMTF2 back at it again with another tutorial. So, in this video I'll be covering some notable bugs in TF2, ranging from stuff so simple it can be done with a single button press, all the way to a mechanic so obscure that it would remain undiscovered in TF2 for 15 years. While this video is mainly intended for people that play jump maps, if you want to learn some cool but useless stuff about the Source engine, feel free to stick around. Okay, so this is the simplest bug I'll be talking about. It's a head bug, just press crouch as you hit a roof that's below a teleport trigger. If you want an explanation for how this works, Shunik has a great video on the topic. The summary is that by tapping crouch while airborne, your bounding box is momentarily shifted up by 20 units. Meaning, if you're within 19 units of a teleport trigger, you can hit it, even if there's a solid roof between you and the trigger. A tip for hitting head bugs consistently is to press crouch very slightly after you hit the roof you're trying to head bug on as your velocity will be much lower in that moment, and chances are the roof is going to be thinner than 20 units anyway. Meaning, the timer will be pretty lenient. Also, TF2 has a funny feature where there's a limit to how many times you can crouch while airborne, so don't just spam crouch for this one. Next up is edge bugs. The short explanation for how these work is if you're falling past a platform, and in theory you'd be airborne two ticks in a row, but at some point in between these ticks you would have touched the platform, Instead of coming to a complete stop, only your vertical speed will get reset, while your horizontal speed will remain unchanged. This results in an edge bug, and gives you the ability to basically slide off of any platform or object that has collision, provided you're not unlucky with your alignment. Another jumper named Exile made a tutorial on edge bugs a while ago, so check out that if you're interested. In the meantime, here's a few tips for edge bugs as you might encounter them in the wild. First, in order to edge bug, obviously try and land as close as possible to the edge of the platform you're aiming for. In general, I'd recommend trying to slightly overshoot as you set up for an edge bug, since slowing down or turning mid-air is much easier than trying to speed up if you fall short. The positioning for edge bugs also gets more lenient if your velocity is higher, another reason why going faster is usually better. Next, edge bugs aren't easier or harder depending on if you're crouched or uncrouched. That being said, uncrouching an edge bug will give you slightly more height, which can matter in some specific instances, like this level on jump sucks as an example. If you wanted a rule of thumb, however, I'd say learn to do edge bugs crouched, since you usually want to be crouched anyway while rocket jumping. Finally, as Exile's tutorial mentions, you can edge bug off of basically anything, even platforms with teleport triggers. However, a much more niche application of this error in the code is the slide bug. I won't pretend to understand the specifics, but they work in a similar way to edge bugs, where if you space things correctly, you can reset your vertical velocity but not your horizontal velocity, and go straight into a ram slide before the game thinks to stop you. Slide bugs are unfortunately pretty tough to hit, so they don't see much application outside of tasses. That being said, they're pretty cool. Okay, next up is wall bugs, which can be defined as any interaction between the player and the wall that somehow resets the player's vertical speed. To successfully wall bug, two conditions have to be met. First, be hugging the wall you want to wall bug on. Secondly, abuse TF2's collision algorithm to get stuck in the wall. The rest of this video will be covering the most common ways wall bugs occur, starting out with the most frequent type, the angled wall bug. To do an angled wall bug, all that's really required is an angled wall, or to be specific, a wall that's not aligned with the map grid. First step is of course, while you're falling, hug the wall. Then, as you're falling, face it directly and hold W while alternating holding down A and D. Once you are stopped, you can let go of A and D, and as long as you keep on holding W, you shouldn't move around. Once properly stuck, you can even let go of W and wall bug further down the same wall by pressing W again. Just don't move around your mouse too much. Or, if you want to enjoy the scenery, use a key that isn't W, because as long as you're pushing yourself in the right direction, you should remain stuck to the wall. Well, most of the time. This is a bug after all, so don't expect it to ever be 100% consistent. That being said, it's definitely possible to be good at wall bugs, so here's a few tips. Like I said earlier, the first step in doing a wall bug is to hug the wall. This sounds simple, but is more complicated than you might realize. That's because, in TF2, basically every wall has what's called a service extension. Imagine it like an invisible barrier that's activated at all times, telling the game to push back a player if they get too close to any surface with a collision. This barrier is only 0.03125 units thick, the real world equivalent of 1 17th of a centimeter. In order to do any wall bug, you need to first get past this barrier. Luckily, TF2 is bad at handling walls not aligned with the grid, so for angled wall bugs, just holding W is usually enough. Remember the concept though, it'll come up again later. The next step in doing a wall bug is to abuse TF2's collision algorithm. 
This is the part that can get kind of random, as many, many different factors influence how Collision works. If you want to know more, I've linked below a document written by Ild Purush that goes into more detail. Anyway, the easiest way to break Collision detection for angled wall bugs is with a single, very pronounced change in the player's directional velocity. The way to do this is while hugging the wall you want to wall bug on, hold A or D for around half a second. Then, sort from A to D or from D to A. In a perfect world, this would work every time, but in practice, some walls are going to be much harder to angled wall bug on, so sometimes you'll have to go back and forth a couple of times. Putting this all together, here's two additional tips for performing angled wall bugs. First, make sure you're facing the wall you want to wall bug on directly. This will ensure you remain perfectly flush against the wall in question and you don't slide around. Next, don't just spam A and D. This is the most common mistake beginner jumpers will make. At minimum, you should be allowing 0.2 seconds between direction changes. While it can depend on the wall, changing direction one or two times is usually going to be enough to get stuck in a wall bug. Great, so that's how you do an angled wall bug. Before we move on to the two most interesting types of wall bugs, I'll cover a couple more niche examples you may not know of. <clears throat> this is basically a niche variant of the angled wall bug, and is only useful in a select few maps. To do these, you get into a wall bug, shift your aim slightly to the left or right, then hold the corresponding direction key. On this jump power bonus for example, if your angle is good, you'll just start gliding, while on this jump day for bonus, you have to press and release W a bunch of times to gain distance. Most of the time however, glide wall bugs are an accident caused when you're not directly facing a wall when trying to do a normal angled wall bug. <sighs> coordinate wall bugs can be done on walls placed at very specific coordinates. For example, this level from Jump Hanami, or this level from Jump Forfism. I'm not really sure why they work, and they're not that useful, but I thought I should at least mention them. I can only think of three maps where they're actually used as an intended mechanic, and my only tip for these three cases is to focus on one very slow directional change. While the math that makes them possible might be interesting, as a mechanic, they're pretty inconsequential overall. This is a mechanic that until very recently was thought to be RNG, and similar to coordinate wall bugs, they will only work in specific locations. To do an entity wall bug, or zipline as it's also called, type cl underscore show pos one into console. Then, carefully adjust your aim until your second angle on show pos is set to one of the following four values. According to the player who discovered this on Kaja, there's a leniency of about 0.1 for this angle, so it doesn't have to be perfect. While maintaining this angle, then hug a corner or find some other way to completely hold horizontal velocity. Finally, as you fall, let go of WASD and press D where you want to stop. You can also do this flip by pressing A, as long as you're moving away from the corner you stop yourself with, it should work every time. There's only a small handful of locations where entity wall bugs are actually helpful, most notably on jump underscore how fourth last. Okay, the final two types of wall bug we'll be looking at are Linux bugs and texture bugs. To start things off, Linux bugs. This is the bug I mentioned took 15 years to discover at the start of this video, and as the name suggests, they are only possible on servers being hosted on Linux. That might sound problematic, but since server hosting is basically always done on Linux, you'll find Linux bugs work on basically every online TF2 server. The notable exception is of course if you're playing offline, meaning your computer is doing the hosting, so keep that in mind. So, how exactly do you Linux bug? The answer is, you hug a wall and then crouch. You may now be wondering, why did it take 15 years to discover this? Well, there's three main reasons. First, doing a Linux bug requires you to go from being uncrouched to crouched while airborne. Since rockets give more knockback when the player is crouched, jumpers naturally just stay crouched more often than not while rocket jumping. Second reason, Linux bugs only work on walls with very specific sets of coordinates. I've linked the original forum post describing them below, but the short version is, they work if your coordinates for the axis perpendicular to the wall you're hugging are between the following ranges in any horizontal direction. Okay, but what does this mean in English? To find if you can Linux bug on a wall, type cl underscore show pos one into console. Then move towards the wall in question, and then check what value in the top right of your screen is changing the fastest. Once you're touching the wall, if the value is between the before mentioned ranges, congratulations, you can probably Linux bug on it. The final reason Linux bugs remained undiscovered for so long is that you need to be actually hugging a wall in order to Linux bug on it. You may remember earlier how I mentioned that walls have a surface extension, that tiny invisible barrier that prevents you from directly touching them. Well, if you want a Linux bug, you have to get past this barrier. How exactly? The answer is, hold W while facing the wall, 
and then go from moving left to moving right, or vice versa. This tiny movement is what allows the player to hug any non-angled wall in fact. And in the case of Linux bugs, once you're hugging the wall, crouching is then enough to break TF2's collision algorithm, as a result of a rounding error unique to Linux operating systems. Summarizing all of this, basically, you just hug a wall at the right spot, change direction, and then crouch to Linux bug. Usually this crouch is done as soon as possible, but if you're perfectly flush with the wall in question, it's actually fine to delay it. So, how useful is all of this? Well, Linux bugs certainly have their place in jump, but in practice, very few walls are in the right coordinate ranges. That being said, as their discovery is still relatively recent, it's definitely possible that there's Linux bug spots that we simply don't know about yet. In the meantime, here's a few examples of them being used in jump maps. With that, we're onto the final bug of this video, the texture bug. Texture bugs are probably my least favorite mechanic in Jump, and the reason why is they have no visual feedback. What do I mean by this? Well, let's take a look at another mechanic, the B hop. B hops are really, really hard, but there's a visual feedback where if you B hop too late, you'll jump immediately after teleporting. Meanwhile, if you B hop too early, you won't jump at all. This means that in theory, if you adjust your timing after every single attempt, you can very easily get more consistent b-hops over time. Meanwhile, let's take a look at an unsuccessful texture bug. Too early, too late, it's unclear exactly what went wrong. But what even is a texture bug? Well, after speaking with Vavli, who helped massively with the making of this video by the way, I realized that trying to properly explain texture bugs would take an entire 30 minute video. For now, here's the short version. Texture bugs are a type of wall bug, so just like before, to perform them, you first hug a wall, and then break TF2's collision algorithm with that wall. This time though, we're going to be specific, because it can't just be any wall, it has to be a brush. And it can't just be a normal brush, it has to specifically be a rectangular prism, otherwise this won't work. Now, despite the name, you only need one brush to perform a texture bug. The label texture bug is actually a misnomer, and there's plenty of examples of spots where you can texture bug on a lone brush. However, it's really hard to texture bug on taller brushes, so usually they'll be done on very short brushes instead, like this example from Jump Wall Fox, one of the maps where people first discovered this mechanic was even possible in the first place. So, how do you do a texture bug? Like I mentioned, the first step is to become flush with the wall, the same as with the Linux bug. Obviously, this will be easier if you have another wall to line you up, and then you do the whole alternating direction thing I mentioned before, and make sure you keep holding W. Then, as the top of your player model is passing the bottom of the brush you're trying to texture bug on, you want to change direction a second time. This tricks the game into thinking you've actually landed on top of the brush that you're falling past. And because the math responsible for handling collisions momentarily breaks, your vertical speed will be reset for a single tick. It's also worth noting that this isn't the only way to trick the game's collision, and there exist setups for certain levels where just walking at a specific angle will actually be enough to consistently texture bug. So, to go over it one more time, while holding W, you change direction to become flush with a wall, and then change direction a second time as you're passing the bottom of the wall, which is usually, but not always, indicated by a change of texture. By the way, texture bugs are also slightly more consistent if you do them crouched. While texture bugs are very difficult, if you practice them a lot and experiment with different timings, it is possible to get pretty consistent with them. Once again though, this explanation is only surface level, so if you're interested in more details, check out the Ildprush document I mentioned before. To finish things off, here's a few tips for hitting texture bugs. Texture bugs are usually caused by a change in direction, not the actual keys being pressed. So, if you're falling faster, that means you also need to start changing direction sooner, so that the precise moment your direction changes aligns with the moment your head passes the bottom of the brush. Next, while it's possible to just get lucky, doing an initial wiggle to become a fully flush with a wall is the best way to be more consistent at texture bugs. Finally, this might just be placebo, but I found that after installing a null movement script, I was hitting more texture bugs, probably because it made changing direction at the right time a bit easier. So, if you're interested, I've linked this in the description below. It makes it so if you're holding two opposing direction keys, you'll always move in the direction of your most recent press key. Meanwhile, in default TF2, when this happens, you'll just stay in place. So, there you go, a non-exhaustive list of some bugs that can show up in TF2. Now, trust me, 
However long you think this script took me to write, I can promise you it took longer. So any kind of support for this video would be greatly appreciated. I have a lot more content on the way, so subscribe if you're interested in seeing more, or leave a comment down below on what you'd like to see me do next. Until next time, peace.